Got another exam question here on the NMR topic. So we're up to number 17 now. There it is there. So if you want to have a got that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answer. Okay, so we'll make a start then. So we're told it's an ester. So obviously you've got this functional group. We've got the elemental analysis by mass and percentages. So I've worked out the empirical formula there. I've got the ratio anyway so far. Three carbons to six hydrogens to one oxygen. So the empirical formula is C3H6O. So we'll work out the MR of that. So MR of that is 58. And then we need to go to the mass spectrum and highlight that peak there. That's the molecular ion peak, which tells us that the MR of the ester is 116. So we'll just compare the mass of the empirical formula to the mass of the molecule, and you'll see that the molecule is twice as heavy. So the molecular formula must be C6H12O2. So we'll just park the mass spectrum for the moment. I'll come back to it at the end uh, once we've got the structure for the ester and we'll try and identify a fragment peak, just in case there's a mark going for that. So obviously the bulk of the marks is for processing the proton NMR spectrum. So we'll start with this signal here, and you can see straight away I've just put a little reminder about this information here. This signal should be here at about 3.9 ppm. So in terms of splitting pattern, it's a heptet, because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, peaks in the signal. So that means there's six protons adjacent to the proton actually causing this signal. So there must be two equivalent CH3 groups um, adjacent to the proton causing the signal. Why am I saying proton? Because there's only one of them from the area. And the shift value, so 3.9, is indicative of an H to C to O environment, which is of course an environment in an ester. So there's all that written down. So we can draw this little part of the ester up now. So we've got um, a hydrogen bonded to a carbon, singly bonded to an oxygen. So might as well draw the rest of the ester group there. And adjacent to this hydrogen, there are two CH3 groups. So that's the, the whole of the right-hand side of this ester group sorted now because we can't put anything else on there. Okay, so we'll move on to this signal now. So this is a quartet. So there's an adjacent CH3 group to the protons causing this signal. The area of two tells us that it's a CH2 group causing the signal. And the shift value is H to C to C double bond O. So that's the other part of the ester group. So we can write that up now and I'll draw the little part of the structure from that. I might as well use the structure I've already established from the previous signal and just sort of add what we now know to this one. So what have we got? We've got a CH2 group bonded to that C double bond O and adjacent to that is a CH3 group. So we've actually got the structure because that's it. We can't put any more atoms on there but obviously we can't leave it there. The answer can't be left there otherwise you wouldn't score all the marks. So we're going to have to sort out the other two signals. Okay, so moving on to this signal now. So we're saying this is around about delta 1.3 ppm. It's a doublet, so that means an adjacent CH. The area of six is telling us that there's six protons in the environment. So it's the two CH3 groups we've already established from a previous signal. And the shift of um, 1.3 ppm is indicative of H to C to R. So essentially, we're talking about these protons here, area six, six of them, split into a doublet because of that single proton, and they're just in the H to C to R environment. So we'll finish with this signal here. So this is a triplet, so there's an adjacent CH2, area three, so a CH3 causing the signal, and the shift again, H to C to R, so this time we're talking about these protons here, area three, split into a triplet because of those two, and they're in H to C to R. So like I said at the start, I'd come back to the mass spectrum just to try and identify one of the fragment peaks. And 
the easiest one to go for would be this one here. So this is at M over Z 101. So you can see the MR is 116. So 101 would be caused from the loss of 15. So in other words, the loss of a, a methyl group, a CH3 group. So you can see we've got um, a couple of methyl groups here. So you could lose one of those. That would bring the mass down to 101. I'm going to sort of cut this one off here and say it's due to the um, product of that. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do this, but I would always encourage my students, once they've got the structure, if there is a mass spectrum given, just go back to it, have a look at the fragment peaks and see if you can see a way of creating one of those um, peaks.